Good day, folks. Thank you for joining us here at Your Health. On today's program, we'd like to discuss controlling chronic yeast and intestinal dysbiosis with the herb rotation cycle. Now, if you've been watching this program over the years, you've come to learn about how your intestinal flora can become out of balance. And you've also been uh, exposed to all the research, hundreds of research projects now, that tell us intestinal dysbiosis and chronic yeast problems can lead to most of the health problems we have today, the chronic degenerative processes that we all suffer from today. The key here is how do we fix this? How do we get the bowel flora back in alignment and keep this yeast in check? Well, that's what we want to talk about. This is a very practical program today and one I'm sure that you can use to your advantage and to improve your health. That's our program. But first, let's go to the news. Let's see what's happening in the health world. Irritable bowel syndrome may be caused by bacterial overgrowth in the small intestines. Researchers from two different institutions discovered a third of IBS patients have an abnormal growth of bacteria in their small intestines. In a study of 320 patients with IBS, scientists showed the typical patient's intestinal tract has a greater number of different bacterial species. A second study found that food poisoning or gastroenteritis may account for the majority of cases of small intestinal bacterial overgrowth that leads to IBS. The trend is especially apparent in those who are at high risk of food poisoning, such as military personnel or world travelers. Folks, the results of these, these truly represent a medical breakthrough. It has long been held by the status quo that irritable bowel syndrome is but a psychosomatic or nervous system disorder. And this implies that if the patient could only control their emotions, their symptoms of abdominal pain, irregularity, and food intolerances would quickly resolve. These discoveries prove the misguided assumptions are false. IBS is most likely the result of infectious gastroenteritis interacting with the patient's unique genetics that ultimately results in profound intestinal dysbiosis. And that's important. These newly discovered IBS facts may lead to real cures for those who are suffering. Garlic may be the most potent and fast-acting antioxidant. New research from Canada has discovered the mechanism by which garlic and other members of the Alacia family of vegetables provide their antioxidant benefits. The researchers found garlic's sulfur-containing compound allicin is degraded into sulfenic acid, which acts as a potent and remarkably fast antioxidant. Related research from King's College London has found people who consume large amounts of garlic, shallots, or onions have lower rates of osteoarthritis. They also discovered a compound in garlic named diallyl disulfide inhibits the activity of a key enzyme in joints that acts to break down cartilage, thus initiating osteoarthritis. Further research from India has discovered adding garlic or onions to cereal grains increases the absorption of this essential minerals. The researchers hope the discovery will help alleviate mineral deficiencies. One third of the world's population is deficient in both iron and zinc. Welcome back everyone. It's such a blessing to be with you today. And pick up that phone and dial the number to call us because Dr. Becker wants to talk to you today and answer your health question. Well, today's show is going to be very interesting. Sit back, take notes. This one's really, I just love talking about these things because we learn new things every day. Today, Richard titled this show, Pearls for Chronic Yeast, and I thought, now, what did he mean by that? Well, you know how sometimes you suffer from a cold, or maybe you have allergies, or whatever your condition is, you just can't seem to get over it. You take medications, you go from doctor to doctor, but your health just doesn't return. Well, it could be that you're suffering from a chronic yeast problem in your intestines. That's why he calls it pearls for chronic yeast, little tidbits that could make a big difference in your life. Richard, a lot of times when we're studying these things, it's hard to make that connection between a chronic yeast problem and your intestinal health, but it's absolutely there. You know, in the past, patients would come to the conclusion that they have dysbiosis or a chronic yeast problem because they've tried everything else and nothing works. It, it, was, it has been in the past a, a, a point of, of, of final destination. Mm -hmm. uh, nothing else works, so well, let's try a yeast program. Well, our understanding of the intestinal tract's microflora and dysbiosis and chronic yeast problems has greatly increased in the last 10 years. It's no longer a, 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 an option of last resort. 
for most of us now, we should be going first to the concepts of intestinal dysbiosis. Dysbiosis is the missing link that explains, this is my opinion, but many are reflecting the same opinion. Dysbiosis is the missing link that explains the majority of our chronic illnesses today. You know, in the past we've always said, well, your genetics are off a little bit. But then the genetic studies have shown that everyone has a genetic predisposition to autoimmune disease. Everyone has a, a disposition to have an allergy. But something triggers that phenomena. Something triggers that cancer gene. And what we're learning is it's the change in bowel flora, the yeast and the mycotoxins and the bacteria that create toxins, okay? Intestinal dysbiosis has now been connected to a wide variety of diseases, including autoimmune diseases, heart attacks, cardiovascular disease. This is yeast syndrome, okay? Dysbiosis, altered bowel flora, uh, cancer, arthritis, inflammatory bowel disease, depression, chronic depression. You know, there's more brain material, let's say nerve material, in the abdomen than there is in the brain. Okay? Really? If you're depressed, sure there can be a problem in the brain, absolutely. But there is absolutely a problem in the gut. See? Serotonin, there's more serotonin in the intestinal tract than there is in the brain. In fact, pediatricians call the abdomen an infant's first brain. But that's a whole other subject. So depression, if you're having anxiety, depression, bipolar, look to the gut. Look to the gut, not just the brain. Okay, uh, ADHD, attention problems, hyperactivity, chronic fatigue, absolutely. Allergies and colds, as you mentioned, Cindy. Uh, asthma, obesity, diabetes, all of these have been uh, intimately linked with dysbiosis and altered bowel flora. You may have intestinal dysbiosis and a chronic yeast syndrome with no obvious intestinal complaints. No obvious intestinal complaints. The most, the majority, do have an intestinal problem. They say, well, yeah, I've been irregular. I, this, that, and the other. I get some cramping. But you may have no symptoms, or they may be severe. Okay, it's so very important that we can't just focus on how's my gut feel to make this conclusion and lead you to the appropriate treatment path. It is imperative that you take steps to correct your intestinal flora, or healing will not occur. I don't know any other clear way to say it. You have to take these steps, okay? 